Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards and today we're taking a look at a keyboard from a company that I'm familiar with. Some of us might be familiar with the Nimbleback 681. It's, um, it's an FRL, Function Rowless. It's very similar to the Eki Aurora 68 layout. Um, and they also do uh, what are called lava cabs, which I actually like. I have a couple sets of them and they look quite nice. Now, this one, I don't know when it was released. It came across my feed on Amazon, so I decided, hey, let's pick it up and take a look at it. It's called the Neon 75, and this looks to be like a cloud of RGB. So if you love RGB, this might be the kit for you. I have not taken a look at it yet, so let's go ahead and do an unboxing of this 80% kit. Or, I guess, yeah, no, it's 80%. I call it a 70, Neon 75. Since this is a wireless um, keyboard, it does have a 2.4 gigahertz dongle. And we have a rubberized USB-C to USB-C with a C to A adapter with a tail. Again, key cron. Why can't you do this? Everyone else is doing it. Then we have a um, one of the softer metal uh, key switch and key cap pullers, but this will work just fine. So nothing too exciting there. And here we have the LTC Neon 75. Now this is a pretty hefty boy that has absolutely no legs. So we're only going to have one typing degree angle. And it looks like we've got three slots for Bluetooth one for 2.4 and then the wired mode um, yeah and this is basically like a 65 percent with the function row so i guess technically this would be a 75 percent um, we do have put in keycaps that are shining through and of course the sub legends on here are for what the function keys are so because this is an rgb keyboard let's go ahead and see what kind of light we get from this puppy Yep, there's definitely some uh, some light to be seen there. I'm going to turn down the lights here in the studio. Better look at these lights. Let's see, I'm going to assume that's, that's turning on and off. That's the brightness. Oh, that's the effects, all right. It looks like we have quite a good selection of RGB effects and colors. So you can select a single color if you like, or you can select different colors, uh, patterns. It's pretty cool because this basically selects the effect and then this allows you to change the colors to solid colors. That's a pretty simple uh, way of doing things. Pretty nice. Now we do have some underglow as well. So it looks like we've got some pretty good effects here. Now it does look like we have what I would assume is a charging indicator light. And doesn't have a way to be turned off. Now this manual is a little bit nicer I guess most of your manuals I mean it's big and colorful but it doesn't have everything back color switch back color mode speed bottom light on or off okay this is for bottom light that's supposed to show the battery levels function with glass face and hold but it's showing me that it's wired mode and it's in windows it's not showing me the power but it is between the f6 and f7 so 60 to 70 percent keyboard state okay so that is keyboard state then check the battery this doesn't really help much these are inconvenient and manufacturers really need to have a way to turn that off especially this keyboard's meant for RGB so somebody who's getting this wants the colors you know and wants the colors to, to work but if you're plugged in and you're going to have that red 
bite there, it kind of defeats the whole purpose. I mean, I just, I, I don't know, with some of these keyboards, it's like they don't even do any user testing. I mean, to have a group of users that, you know, have NDA signed, and give them the keyboard and allow them to be as honest as possible, they're going to say, that's stupid. Because I, I know it's charging, it's plugged in. Now, if I want to know, you know, I mean, I should be able to see, like it says there, the state of the keyboard, but, I mean, is that F6? Is that F7? I don't know, because these are actually lit underneath. That one's not lit. So I'm not even, I'm not even sure what the battery percentage is. Is that just a charging indicator? Is that how much battery I have? I don't know. Well, let's take a look at what we got under here. All right, these came with reds. I don't think they had too many choices. So we can see off the bat that, oh, surprisingly enough, surprisingly enough, it does look like we have, I don't know, wow, this actually looks like it's the plate that goes down. Um, hmm. The plate looks to be like literally sitting on top of the PCB. But of course there is no case dampening. Um, which with the white bottom, you'd figure you could put some case dampening in there, but as you can see, it goes all the way clear through. Now it does have five pin compatibility, which is nice. And the switches that it comes with are, look like they're RK switches. Okay, now they're Jer-Z, J-E-R-R-Z, -E Jersey. Now, I've not heard of these switches, but... All right, so we've got these uh, no-name switches that, I mean, they feel like Gatoron Reds, but they're a uh, wing latch and they're three pin. I can't really tell the manufacturer of this. The molding is a little bit different hmm I'm curious I'm curious I'm curious now let's see what we got under the stabilizers all right we can see the keys are double shot um, so that clear plastic can be seen on the bottom and through to there and they're actually decently thick All right, so they come in at just over one millimeter, 1.1 millimeter for the body, which is better. I mean, it's not the best, but it is better. Now, what do we have here with the stabilizers? These uh, clear, kind of opaque ones, kind of like a clear stem, they, they, to me, have been the cheapest so far. And then look at how loose they are. They're rattling. So there's just dead hollow space in there. So yeah, that's not a. These are not very good uh, stabilizers that it comes with. So I'm kind of trying to. I mean, bes besides the the RGB effects, which I'm sorry, but if you're going to be plugged in, it's kind of it's going to take away from the experience as I mean there should be a way to turn that light off because say this is the color that I want to go with I'll well, see there it doesn't matter much because it kind of blends in but if I pick a single color So if I pick a single color, I mean, it's still going to... Does it go to sleep immediately? All right, you see this, right? It's. It 
it's kind of doing things on its own there. Yeah, the LEDs on this, the RGB is acting quite funky, and then look, it just turns off. Now that's ridiculous. I didn't read anything about sleep on here. All right, I, I don't know. Um, with the RGB with this keyboard, something seems funky about it. Uh, the charging light, that's a bit of a pain. Um, I just, hmm, I don't know. I'm not necessarily impressed with this keyboard for one. I mean, it is plastic, so give me at least two angles that I can type with. Uh, for two, I want to get rid of that charging light. Why can't I turn that charging light on or off? Um, for three, what's up with these lights? Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. I mean... This is, <laughs> what is up with this keyboard? All right, so I compare this to the LTC Nimbleback. There's no comparison. The LTC Nimbleback actually sounds pretty decent out of the box and requires very little modding to actually get the sounding like a much more expensive keyboard. But this one, I mean, they even, they just, they missed the mark. This is not, I mean, it's plugged in, it's charging, but the lights just go off when they decide to. And decide, it, but if I unplug it, plug it back in, it's gonna be a gamble. I don't know about that. All right, let's get technical. What we've got here is the LTC Neon 75. It's an 84 key. Guess what you'd call it, 80%. Um, though they're trying to say 75%, I think. Uh, it's basically a 65% with the function row. Now, it does not have any feet, so we only have one typing angle, which is seven degrees. The chin of the keyboard, the front, sits at 23 millimeters above your surface, while the back sits at 33 millimeters. It comes with PBT shine through putting keycaps and it retails MSRP for $69.98. I actually purchased this from Amazon for $56 with a coupon that Amazon had. So while I, I honestly, I wanted to like this keyboard because I wanted to get in there and mod it, but um, I'm just kind of, this is kind of just odd to me. I mean, it, it, you plug it in one way and it works. I mean, because if the light's on, it's plugged in. But it goes to sleep within one, two, three, about three seconds. Three to five seconds, it goes to sleep. There's no way to get rid of that charging indicator. Um, even though, I mean, this shows you the state. So that should give you the charging indicator. And it should be off normally. But this is just... It's, it's a poor implementation, honestly. Um, as much as I wanted to like this keyboard, uh, for what I paid for it, $56, it's, I'd still have to put in a lot of work. Plus, there's just things that I can't get over as far as how it's programmed. Now, are there software updates? I don't know. Um, but honestly, even at $56, I don't believe that this keyboard's worth it. But it was more around the $30 range, perhaps. But why aren't these things tested? Do they not have uh, test users? Do they not go through a process of, hey, let's put it in the hands of people that are actually going to use it and have them give us some feedback? Because these are little things that could be changed with one line of code in the firmware. Um, and why manufacturers are not reaching out more towards QMK, VIA, VIO, um, all the open source firmwares that are out there, it's beyond me. I mean, half, half the heavy lifting has been done for them. They really only need to create configuration files that maps out the matrix and the features. Um, and then it's available to everyone on any operating system. Go figure. I mean, seems silly not, not to go that route, but I'm not manufacturer, so I can't speak to them. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and 
leave you guys with a stock sound test of this LTC Neon 75 so you guys can see what it, hear what it sounds like stock. Um, and then, I mean, there's really not much more. I'm, I, I, I don't think I'm going to keep this keyboard, so I don't think I'll be coming back to it to monitor anything. I don't think that the value is there, unfortunately. So I'll leave you guys with a stock sound test. And until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.